This is Ben, Liam and Bell on Nova. G'day there, podcaster. Yeah, welcome to the first show of 2023. Felt good off the bat. Uh, Pitbull with hair is the name of this episode. There was a bit of fun in there, a bit of schlop as well. Mm, um, there is. Always good when the schlop, I find, is at the very start of the show when less people are listening and then the show progressively gets better. Yeah, so I think we, we said, started good. Yeah, and then we finished weak. So we thought that um, six and seven, pretty good. Yeah. And then eight got a, a, a bit ordinary. We're talking hours, six o'clock, seven o'clock. People get that, Bill. I don't know, because you said that on air and you said, oh, six and seven were good. And I was like, if I was in my car and mm. I didn't do radio, what I'd be like, what's six? Maybe you, maybe what? Ben's a little too cool for his own good sometimes, you know? Mm. You know, he's always talking about hitting, cool hitting the gritty thing. with his homegirls and whatnot yeah. and, you know. <laughs> Fly boys hanging out at Fitzroy garage parties. Yeah. You know, oh, you know yeah, how yeah. it is. Anyway, enjoy the show. Right now, it's time for this. It's 610. Hallelujah, it's 610. Yep, the 610 quiz. We do it every single morning at the exact same time. We said this morning, because it's the first one for 2023, we feel like this is going to set the tone for the rest of the year. Uh, in fact, Kristen from Frankston South, you are the first caller of the year. No pressure. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. I was just about to say that. No pressure at all. Yeah. yeah. No, I think you'll be all right. You're setting the tone pretty nicely a, so far. It's a good vibe. You haven't stumbled yet. I think yeah. we're off to a flyer. <laughs> and also, just being on the air, you are in the draw to win 50 grand. So that's pretty good, huh? Amazing. What a start to the year that would be. I know. All right, look, if you can get all five questions right in this 16 quiz, you also get to choose the next song we play. So, question number one. Aretha Franklin has topped the Rolling Stone list of the best singers of all time. Can you spell... Respect. R-E-S-P-C-T. Ooh, no. no. <laughs> You're supposed to sing it to the song and you no, should it. No, <laughs> no, you've, you've done I that to- one I, I've wrong. I've said before, we shouldn't make this the bar for the year because this is, <laughs> this is backfire. That was respect. Um, Kiara from Seaford, can you spell respect? R-E-S-T-E-C-T. That's the one. Uh, okay, the e-scooter trial will continue in Melbourne for the next few months. Can you name one of the two colours of the e-scooters you can see in Melbourne around the city? Blue, I think. I don't... There's the blue bikes. Do we count the blue uh, I don't think we count blue. I, I don't know, Kiara. I don't think we can. Sorry. Simone in Point Cook, do you know the colours of one of the two main scooter brands in town? I don't think there's yellow either. No, yellow green, yeah. What are yellow you? Green. What are you trying to make every colour? <laughs> yeah, okay. No, sorry. Yeah, oh no, no. All no, right. John, John, in Frankston South, do you know the the colour of the the line bikes? I mean, sure, you've thrown one into the Yarra once upon a time. Do you know what colour they are? Yeah, uh, they're green. Yeah, they yes. are. Nice. That's a. Uh, or as Bell says, you know, yellow, <laughs> green, yellow. <laughs> yellow, green, fluoro green. Um, okay, question three. The Melbourne Renegades smashed the Melbourne Stars last night at the MCG. What sport are we talking about here, John? The cricket. That's the one. It was Mel Gibson's 67th birthday this week. In Braveheart, his character says that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our what? Freedom. He's got it. Miley Cyrus has a new single out next week, and it's coming out on her ex, Liam Hemsworth's birthday. Can you finish these Miley Cyrus lyrics? It's a party in the USA. (laughs) Yeah! Good job, John. Sung with zero flair. No, there was, there was a little bit of flair at the end. Nah, it's all right. I mean, hey, you, you answered it right. Uh, well, John, uh, you're in the draw to win 50 oh. grand, mate. Oh. F- free for 23. Um, also, you get to pick the next song we play. So would you like to hear this one this morning? Look for the girl with a broken smile Ask her if she wants to stay alive And she will Or, oh, John... Would you like to hear Kelly Clarkson's best song ever? Tricky one, John. Pretty emotional start. Yeah. What are you thinking, Maroon Five or Kelly Clarkson? Um, let's go, Kelly Clarkson. Yeah, nice. Head down as a Kelly oh, guy. By the way. Make sure you stare out the car window to this one and reflect on your life. Specifically, you, John. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Tom. 
<laughs> so just pause Kelly there for a second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tom. Did you try and correct me earlier as well, but I was like asking questions over the top of you? Yeah, I yeah, did. I did. That's all right. No, that's can't more win of a, all. Yeah, no, you can't. And that's more of a that's more of a producer thing. That's uh, you know they're yeah. the ones who answer the calls. And but, you know what? Well, uh, and it, it sucks because we're the ones that have to wear that responsibility. Oh, you know, we, Tom, over it. come on, just play Kelly. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Tom. <laughs> we'll all poor, stare out. Poor there. Tom's been called John oh all my morning. God, it's fine. <laughs> so it's really yeah. not. No, we're sorry about that, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're feeling a little bit like. Uh, maybe no one's listening because everyone's sleepy. The world's maybe not awake yet. Um, but we're back and we thought, you know, surely there's a few people back. So we're asking, yeah, what are you doing? What, wh- who's making you be up so early on a day like today? Uh, Sophia in Mornington, why are you up so early? Hey, guys. Um, just wanted to say, first of all, best of luck for this year. Thank Thanks, you. Sophia. Um, Appreciate I'm, it. I'm nothing too exciting. I'm just at work. I start at 6.30. I work in admin in a hospital. Oh, yeah, see, that's one of those jobs that's never going to stop. That's yeah, it. did you get a yep. break, Sophia, at all? Um, I'm actually off to Bali on Monday, so that's mm. my break. Sick. So Hopefully you don't get that Jetstar flight that gets to <laughs> Bali and then turns straight back to Melbourne. So does that mean yeah, you no. worked all through Christmas and New Year's? I uh, didn't work Christmas. I worked last Christmas, so I had this Christmas off, which was nice. Okay. Well, enjoy, Kuda. Uh, get your hair braided for us. Uh, we went on a little team trip to, to Bali in July this year. One of the greats. We did a uh, podcast series on that, if you want to hear that. <laughs> yes. Bing Tangs <laughs> by the pool. It's called The Bing Tang Diaries, and uh, Ben and I are pretty much blind the whole time <laughs> where we're in that. We are actually, I think we entered it into the podcast awards, though, <laughs> uh, so that'll be interesting. Uh, Angela, in Epping, uh, good morning. You, you're up. Are you back to work already? Yeah, so, no, well, I haven't had a break yet. So. Oh, so you worked all the way through. What do you do? Um, I'm in childcare. Oh, yeah. Well, hang, hang yeah, on. Yeah, shouldn't shouldn't, shouldn't all the parents also be off at the moment, like yeah. having public holidays and whatnot? Yes, I think most of them are, but, you know, childcare doesn't close. That's so, hang on, so, so childcare's who's open. Who's checking their kids in Sorry, childcare's open on Christmas Day? Uh, not Christmas Day, not Boxing Day. So we did have all those public holidays. Yep. But that was it. Yeah, you yeah. still don't get like a break. Yeah. Especially you don't get a break and yeah. No. Yeah. Oh well thanks. You're not for what going you're to doing. Bali next week, are you, Angela? <laughs> Okay. No. <laughs> okay. No. I don't uh, think Angela's going to Bali. <laughs> Sharon joins us now. Good morning. What do you do for work? Good morning, my new besties. Oh, oh good on you, Sharon. Sharon. Appreciate that. I'm on my way to work. I'm working with Victoria Police, and unfortunately, the criminals don't have any holdouts, <laughs> not even for today. This is true. Yeah, we, we yeah. do know crime doesn't rest. <laughs> it uh, doesn't. And we don't really have any, doesn't. you know, caped crusaders, uh, you know, sweeping the streets up like they do in the movies. Um, so, no. so what, I mean, are you, are you, are you on sort patrol? Of are you like, are desk you, or do you, on the beat? No, I'm actually still on my way to work. However, right. I'd be the person who's processing your paperwork. So, somebody else is going to grab you and I'm going to make sure it all happens. Oh, so that's, I mean, surely you'd prefer to be doing the grabbing, right? Yeah, stomping the pavement. Uh, not not really, no. Yeah, no? Okay. I like my air-conditioned office in summer. Sharon, do you still get a, a piece? Do you mind me asking? Do you still <laughs> do you still have one strapped to the side just in case? No, definitely not. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it feels like you, you, you've even, got all the responsibility. No need if you're not on the road. You know what I mean? you got all the responsibility and none, you don't get the cool flashing lights. <laughs> you wanted you to say none of the fun? Yeah, well, I did. I did. But of course, you know, it's quite a serious position. You don't even have a taser? <laughs> Not even a taser. <laughs> <laughs> taser, the receptionist. I don't, I don't know if the printer's not working or something. Well, this is the biggest story of the year. I know we're only like four days in, but uh, last year, 2022, was the year of the slap. Uh, 23, so far, I would say it's the year of Andrew Tate. Have you been following this story, this Andrew Tate, Greta Thunberg thing? I've seen the top line, so I've seen all of the headlines, but it's one of those wild stories. I haven't been able to keep across all the details of it. I've been following it quite closely. I went away for a few days without uh, reception. Mm. When I got back, I was like, I've got to catch up on the end. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> well, look, there is an update. Uh, and But first, we'll get you up to speed. So, Andrew Tate, he's a former kickboxer and he's like the king of toxic masculinity. He's super misogynistic. Just an all-round, like, arsehole, really. He's sort, of, he's sort of, like, inflammatory for the purpose of being inflammatory. I think his whole bit is he just wants to make people angry. Just to go back to the absolute basics, I thought he got cancelled. And then we yeah, went to, I thought so, that he disappeared completely. 
completely. Yeah, he got he got banned off like literally every social media platform, and then I think Elon let him back. Yes, because remember how Elon's like, oh, I'm gonna you know let everyone back and cancel right. what I want, and then that's why people are off Elon Musk as well at the moment because yep. he's going like, oh yeah, Trump, you know, you do this. How and- dare you? Yeah, exactly. And um, so he's got his new fancy Twitter account back. So he thought, oh, I'm gonna tweet Greta Thunberg the um you know, the Swedish environmental activist. And he said, Hi, Greta, I have 33 cars. My Bugatti has a quad turbo. My two Ferrari 812 Competiziones have 6.5 litre V12s. This is just the start. Please provide your email address so I can send a complete list of my car collection and their respective in enormous emissions. Right, so he's being purely... Yeah, popular. like, just, yeah. you know, he wants to get a rise out of it. But, you know, Greta shot back. She thought, how dare you? <laughs> uh, How dare you? She said, yes, please do enlighten me. Email me at smalldickenergy at getalife.com, <laughs> which is awesome. Like, And so really at that, at that point, Greta, you know, she's she smoked this guy. Good, yeah. He's like, so good. He's like twice her age. She's being a bully. Uh, and then he basically did, oh, I know you am, but what am I? Because he, re- he replied with this video. My very extensive car collection with internal combustion engines, which run on dead dinosaurs, have an enormous emission profile. And she replied by telling me her own email address. Greta's email address is, I have small dick energy. (laughs) Why would that be your own email address, Greta? Strange. Please bring me pizza and uh, make sure that these boxes are not recycled. He so comes off second best in that Doesn't because he? he comes it's off like, so oh, childish. I- interesting that that's your email because that means you have the small dick. I am rubber. You are glue. Ex- yeah. It's exactly what you said, Liam. He said, oh, I know you are, but what am I? And then didn't even get the email address right. But and if the story stopped there, you'd go, "Wow, that was fun." I'm glad we got to be <laughs> along on the ride of, for that. You know, we got to see each other. Yeah. You know, shooting back and forth. Well, from that video that this Andrew Tate guy posted, mm. authorities used the pizza box that he said wasn't recycled to track him down. He's since been arrested in Romania as part of an investigation into human trafficking and organised crime. So he's even a worse dude than we originally thought. That takes such a weird turn. He's in real hot water here. And Greta has tweeted back, this is what happens when you don't recycle your pizza boxes. Damn! (laughs) So good. Damn, girl! And then here's the update. Uh, as of this morning, the Taliban have reached out <laughs> <laughs> and showed their support for Andrew Tate. That's not good. Even for, <laughs> even for him, surely he's like, ah, yeah, thanks, but no thanks, Taliban. Like, not, not really the character reference I'm uh, I'm looking for here. <laughs> so the story's still ongoing. It's not fully. Oh, yeah. No, no, he's still, yeah, so he's detained. The Taliban are like, we support this guy, and Greta's just, <laughs> Greta's just owned him. She's just, How you know. You? Yeah, she's just, you know, flicking him away on, on Twitter, just, like, beating him at every turn. That is a wild, wild story. Uh, it's good. We are back now live on your radios, but we had a week off over the holiday break, which is great for catching up on shows you haven't seen. Uh, Belle, did you watch anything over the break? Um, I watched Home Alone 2 for the first time. That was good. <laughs> and, um, and Sully. It's always good. So we try and, you know, working in the radio, you try and keep your finger on the pulse, that sort of thing. You sort of talk about the movies that other the people are seeing. Shows, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we said, yeah, just before, we're like, oh, Belle, you got any movies you can talk about? She's like, yeah, I saw Sully. Well, like, <laughs> You, you mean Sully, the one that came out in 2008? <laughs> what? Yeah, great film. I like to Sully. sit on no, things is, for a while. It is great, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no one's, like, watching Sully. Like, you know what's the good? Moment. There's a movie called um, Titanic. You should probably yeah. watch that. Oh, yeah, actually, I bought the VHS of that the other yeah. day. Oh, yeah. Actually, speaking of mega blockbusters like Titanic, uh, of course, the new Avatar movie's out at the moment. Isn't it, like, three hours long? So long. And I, I hadn't watched the original one since it first came out in 2009, so I re-watched that one the Bell, day before. Bell's, Bell's going to see it, the first one in cinema <laughs> next week. So I watched 2009 one, and I think I, I remembered not really liking it, and then I watched, re-watched it, and I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought Avatar was quite a good I movie. Think we were too young when I it think came so. out. I don't know. Yeah, it was one of those ones, Ben, I, I remember going with the family, having the, mm-hmm. having the glasses the 3D. on. Yeah, it was one of the first sort of... Yeah, I remember Dad was a bit confused by the yeah. 3D, because I think it was the first 3D movie yeah. we'd seen as a family. That know? was one of the amusing parts of going to go see it. When I was booking the session online, I uh, ended up going to the Chadson Cinema, the Hoyts, and when I was booking it, it had the option to watch it in 3D, <laughs> 
which I thought had died a long time did ago. You, did you go 3D? I didn't do 3D oh. because I don't like oh, I get a I headache. You had to watch it in 3D. No, there's options not in 3D. You know what I like? Right. I like um, 4D. Like, um, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, you go see Shrek at um, Movie World and it like shakes and when yeah. he sneezes, his water comes on you. That's what I want to see. So I, I did rate Avatar extremely long, but I, overall I enjoyed Avatar 2. Um, the other thing that I watched I wouldn't mind talking about, it's all over Netflix at the moment, the biggest show around Glass Onion. Have we started already? Is it? Well, the murder hasn't happened. Oh, okay. but yeah, why not? As Watson said to Holmes, it was Bertie who planted a remote device on a crossbow in revenge for you stealing her signature Ren Diamond. If you haven't watched it yet, it's an amazing murder mystery. Daniel Craig plays like the southern uh, main character. He walks around going, I do declare. <laughs> it's very, it's very uh, different to him in James Bond. I, I saw like half of it yep. uh, last night. Also, Belle, that, I know you're looking a bit weird. That isn't that doesn't give away the entire plot. I know it sounds like it does, yeah. but that no, that's like that's from a, that's from a thing earlier in the movie. So, hang on, is a movie TV series? It's a movie. Oh, oh, okay. And so, the, so without spoiling it, this is the premise really quickly. The, the premise is there's all these random friends. They're all connected in this random way. Mm-hmm. They all come to this island to solve their friend's murder mystery game. It's like a game, but then obviously, you know, there's going to be a real one, and then they. Oh, have to it's that like out. um, it's like game night. That comedy. Yeah, it's, it's kind of similar to no, another old movie. I actually, yeah, you yeah, know. Like so, can you just stop talking about things that came out like you know five to ten years ago, please? <laughs> we're trying to, we're trying to, you know, get our glass onion on here and talk about. Yeah, did you? I mean, did you like? It? I haven't finished it yet. I yeah, I did enjoy it. I it's so hard to talk about that spoiling it because obviously it's there's a twist. Like obviously it all builds up yeah, to the end. Okay. Someone gets yeah. murdered. I wasn't super satisfied with the ending. I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was really good, but I wasn't so satisfied. So tonight, if I'm if I'm either putting Netflix on. And Glass Onion's there for free. Or I've got to pay to go see Avatar potentially in 3D. What mm-hmm. am I doing? Glass Onion. Oh, okay. Well, there, yeah. you there you have it. Let's find out what's trending. What's trending? It's trending all over the internet. Twitter. Instagram. Welcome to Facebook. Well, the Avengers star, Jeremy Renner, is still in a critical condition after a snowplow crash. No, Hawkeye. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. So yeah. Hawkeye is, of course, from the Avengers. He's like Duh. a good archer. Right. Which I always thought out of all the Avengers was the lamest. Like he's just got a, he's really good with the bow and arrow. He's up. He's in a critical condition. <laughs> I was there, buddy. Say. He was ploughing snow, and um, fortunately, yeah, had uh, he's now got serious injuries from this crash, and he now is still in a critical condition following surgery. Well, well hopefully he's okay. I must admit, Nevada snow plough. Incident sounds like a cover story, doesn't it? It sounds like something worse happened or something they didn't want to talk about. You reckon he was making some of that famous hot sauce that he makes and it exploded in the factory? Maybe. Maybe. He's, he's no, I just, I mean, he's like, got it's, hot sauce, it's by like, the way. how do my parents right. die? How yeah. do my parents die? Oh, it was a snow plant incident. Yeah. Like, if you wouldn't believe it, would you? You'd be like, mm, I don't think so. Yeah. I think they're just saying that. Okay. Well, and Wednesday may not be coming back to Netflix. Yeah. I think Wednesday was for me. I gave it about 20 minutes and was like, nah. Might not have been for you, but it was like, oh, for a while, huge. it was the biggest show it, on Netflix. It dethroned Stranger Things, the most streams in the first week. It, uh, yeah, it absolutely broke records. But now the company that actually makes the show has been bought by Amazon. So now it might not stay on Netflix for season two. It might go to like Amazon Prime. Oh, you're going to have to get another account, guys. <laughs> gonna have to do that thing. Are you Liam? Can I have your login? Yeah, please? of course you can. Bill Thank steals you. all my accounts um, and pays me nothing. For, like normally, w- how it works is like I'll do Stan and Netflix, and then like you do binge or whatever. But like, yeah, what have you given anyone, Bill? My love and hard work. Literally, you just you, you, you take, take, take. You take, take, take. <laughs> and finally, Rolling Stone's 200 Greatest Singers list has upset a lot of people in the music world. If you haven't seen, they have released the list. And coming in at the top three, I'll give you super quick. We've got number three, Sam Cooke. Number two, Greatest Singer, Whitney Houston. And number one, Aretha Franklin. <laughs> Great, that's fantastic. But it's the people that have been left off the list that has caused a stir. They didn't include Celine Dion, Madonna, Cher, and no Aussies whatsoever. No Aussies. So in the top 200 greatest singers list, they didn't include Kylie Minogue, Bon Scott, Michael Hutchins. No Altian Childs from X Factor. Who? Paulini. Did she get a run? No, nah, didn't see her. Justice Crew. <laughs> Dean Guy wasn't on there. Oh, Dean Guy! No Jack Pigeon. The Vidge was snubbed. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
Uh, well, Happy New Year uh, to you all. Happy New Year to you as well, Ben, and to you, Bell. Um, I don't know if you guys have got um, maybe New Year's resolutions. Always a good time to start afresh. Um, I think most people feel pretty gross at this time of the year. I mean, oh, yeah. it's, uh, it's definitely mm. the week or month, if you will, of indulgence. I know when I've put on a little bit of Christmas pud because uh, my fiance says this every year. She says, like, we need to get fitter. We need to get fitter. Which And she's very fit. So this is that's more her saying. You need to sort yourself out, you know what I mean? Like, it's a nice way of saying that. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, this year, like pretty much like every year, I'm like, you know what? Clean living. I'm getting married in mm-hmm. December, so I'm clean living, baby. Mm-hmm. Yes, I've Just heard you say that eat. last. That's it. Going to eat greener. Going to get those meals. You know, you get those meals, the microwave meals, the, you know, the steamed veg sort of Live stuff. Live cleaner and microwave meals don't really go no, on the same thing. No, it's just because, you, you know, I'm in such a rush exercising all the time. <laughs> I'll need to get those, you know, clean meals yeah. that you can, you know. So, I'm just like fully, let's do this. This is the year. Yeah. And obviously, New Year's Day is a write-off because you're a bit hungover. So, like, you don't really count that. Yep. Um, you know, the second was also sort of public holiday. So, I also sort of put that in that window of, you know, observed. So, yep. you know, can... But yesterday was my real day where I'm like, I'm just going to eat clean. So, like, just had, like, this, um, just this, like, nice fresh bowl, basically, basically, like, spinach and an egg for breakfast clean. Um, then, like, later in the day, I was um, walking um, past uh, my new local servo and um, I always like in a servo when it's like, you know, there's, like, ratty servos and they've got, like, you know, they've got... And I was like, I'll just see, like, because I was sort of, like, walking around, like, getting to know the area, you know, new to Melbourne and um, ended up having a wing ding lunch, um, <laughs> y- you know, with the wing dings. The... No, what's... No. Yeah. Is a wing ding, like, a deep fried chicken yeah, wing? it's a chicken it's wing. It's like a breaded... It's, it's like a servo dude. chicken wing. It's a breaded chicken wing yeah. that they then fry and then leave in a bay marie for three days. It's unreal. That's not food. Yeah. Normally, you normally find it next to a chico roll or... A big yeah. dimmy. Big that has, dimmy. Yeah, you get those dirty, like, servo <laughs> dimmies. <laughs> Liam, that has no nutritional value whatsoever. Well, it Gosh. tasted good. So, you know, anyway, um, and that was more of a secret lunch. But, uh, you know, then, <laughs> like, last night we went out um, for dinner, uh, me and my partner. And, um, yeah, it was, we went out for, like, an Italian cuisine. And I told myself I was going to get, you know, the, the fish or something. But uh, I ended up getting a big, creamy carbonara. <laughs> and I had, the, it was one of those cheaper places as well. So they had, Steins of beer, <laughs> so I had a liter of beer, a creamy carbonara, and wing dings for lunch, and that was my first day of like, this is the clean living year. So I suppose there's always 2024. So it's the fourth of January, yeah, and you've already failed. I've already, yeah, I've already cooked it. All right. Well, look, I'm sure you're not alone in this boat, but. In this life, we get second chances. We do. So it's okay this morning if you want to call up 13 24 10 and admit your failed New Year's resolution. And I'm telling you guys, from now on, I'm eating clean. Unless, I'm living. unless we walk past one of those servos again, <laughs> and then I will probably have to have a dim sim. Yeah, I'm glad that it's the 4th of January. We've already got some Pitbull yeah, on your Yeah, it feels good. Yeah, getting the yearly intake up nice and early. Quick one. Have you seen the photo of Pitbull when he had hair? No, but oh, I'd like to see it. You've got to look it up. Bit of a daddy, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, so he was nicer with hair. Gorgeous. Are you looking is, it up is now? It, is it Matt Button Boldness or has he shaved that on purpose? I, it, lo- it looks like he's like an on purpose. It bold, looks, bold. yeah, but it's probably he started receding and then went, well, yeah. come here. But yeah. oh, if you look up Pip- Whoa. Yeah. Ben's just looking it up. Gee whiz. Yeah, do yourself a favour, guys. Uh, look up Pitbull with hair uh, if you get the chance today. Right now, though, we're talking about failed New Year's resolutions because I myself, Liam, uh, tried to eat cleaner this year. Didn't really work. Um, had a bit of a servo lunch yesterday, a few wingdings, big carbonara for dinner, a lot of beer. No good. You're not alone, though, Liam. Uh, Scott joins us now. Good morning, Scott. Have you already failed your New Year's a resolution. Uh, g'day, guys. Yeah, I sure have, mate. Um, I then I get stuck into the gym and no more beers. Not only did I find myself not at the gym, mate. The next morning, as soon as the wife went out, I was stuck in there a six pack of beer. So. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Wrong six packs. Wrong six packs. <laughs> no. That's good stuff, though. But that's it's a little bit like that. You know, normally that's a problem, having yeah. a six-pack when your wife goes to work. But, I mean, this time of the year, I mean, is it is it Tuesday or is it, is it Saturday? I don't know. Like, it's kind of like whatever. Be, should we be worried about Scott? No, no, he's, he's all right. Fine. It's that time of the year, you know? Yeah. But, hey, Scott, this is a clean break now, though, okay? So you're going to start fresh as of today, yeah? That's it, mate. I'm going to try and get on the bandwagon again at 8.22. Nice one, man. <laughs> nice one. All right. Well, good luck to you. Uh, Sherelle and Melton, how are you doing? Uh, have you had a news resolution that four days in has already gone down the toilet? 
Yeah, well, look, it was gone down the toilet the first day. I'm not going to lie. I oh, actually yeah. just keep my doggies in, uh, outside for once because they're very destructive. But day one, I couldn't do it. They're like my little children. Oh, so your resolution was put the dogs outside, was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, oh, it looks very so. cute. We, we, we were like a dog sleeping in the bed type of uh, group, mm. but we're trying to um, phase that out. Yep. You know how, like, with, um, you know, kids, you sort of take the dummy away or you put yeah. them in a... Yeah, we're trying to get the dog in a, in a different room. Yeah. yeah. Didn't yeah. your dog have, like, explosive... <laughs> Uh, one time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, one time. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. It didn't get in the sheets, but it was uh, very, very much around the uh, the carpet. And I also blamed it on the dog after those wing dings. Am I right? <laughs> and I am glad to see the back end of 2022 because I was sitting in the emergency room at 1am on Boxing Day. That's not fun. No. Uh, it wasn't the human emergency room. It was the animal emergency centre in Mount Waverley. Mm. Ben, even less fun because at least with a the human, they can tell you what's wrong. It's always sad with your pets when you, you don't know, you know? Exactly right. And so my dog, Finn, he's a curly retriever. We've had him now for two years. And I had to take him to emergency surgery because he had a twisted stomach. Oh. So he hadn't been eating much since Christmas. And so we knew something was off. But then he started getting like really unsettled and he wouldn't lay down. And then we knew something wasn't right. And then it got really serious when he started like his back legs started shaking. Yeah. He was like, it was going to collapse. Yeah. So I jumped in the car, like picked him up, put him in the car, took him to the nearest emergency vet, which was the one in Mount Waverley. And when we got there, super busy. And the receptionist said the wait time's up to four hours. Jeez, long time. A long time. And so the way it works is the triage nurse will come out, assess your animal, and they'll uh, see patients in order of yeah. severity. And so the triage nurse came out, she saw him, and she's like, oh, my God, we have to treat this dog immediately. Wow. Which is al- so, almost, like, worse, right? Because you're like, oh, no, this must be really bad. Yeah, If you're exactly. going to the front of the line. And so they took him out the back. They did all the scans. They came out. They sat me down. They said, look, not good news. We've done x-rays. His stomach is twisted. If we don't operate immediately, it'll be fatal. And they said there's also no guarantee that he's going to survive the surgery either. What do you want us to do? Oh, my God. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, because I just, I, I knew he was sick, but I didn't think he was going to die. Yeah. And then my wife, Sam, she stayed at home. And so I had to call her and be like, it's actually it's super serious. She started crying. Then I was upset. And then you have to sign a do not resuscitate form as well. So because they and I said, and I said, I want them to resuscitate yeah. because they said, oh, if we resuscitate, if he dies, we resuscitate, he might have then ongoing health yeah, effects. Yeah, right. right. So it's like all this information. And they said we have to, and they were like pushing me for an answer because they said that the longer you leave this, the worse it's going to get because his stomach's twisted so nothing can pass through. Yeah. yeah, right. And so I was like, geez, okay, well, obviously operate. Like I want to save my dog. So they operated. Good news. He's fine. Oh. He's recovering well. <laughs> my dog's totally fine. I tell you what, though, I needed to go to the emergency room when I saw the bill. Was your stomach twisted as well when you saw that one? So keeping in mind, this was emergency surgery at 1 a.m. Yes. on a public holiday. Oh, the double the double rates, the public holiday rates. And you so cut the line. Obviously, all I cared about was the dog was okay. Yeah. Finn's fine. That's yeah. all I cared about. And then when I got the bill, $9,872. <gasps> Yeah, I would have had to put him down, I reckon. Is he worth that? <laughs> no, of course, I would pay that. Yeah, you'd have to you'd, you'd sell the car or something. You'd have to... It's so it's so wild because obviously you have all these thoughts that run through your head, but you're like, obviously he is worth that. He's worth he's worth $100,000. They, they but didn't give you a heads up. They didn't go, oh, by the way, if we do the surgery, it's another five grand. They gave me the upfront cost, but they, they weren't specifics. They were just estimates. So they yeah. said it could cost from this to this. Yeah. Also, your dog's going to die if we don't operate right yeah. now. So, of course, you just say, yes, do what you got to do. Your dog's yeah. like two years old as well, right? Yeah. You'll be telling him that's his last stomach twist. Yeah. (laughs) Gonna get one more of them. (laughs) Literally. Uh, The good news is, though, and what I would say is, and I'm super anti-insurance. I've got anything I can not have insurance on, I don't have insurance. Honestly, if you wanted to steal Ben's TV, he can do nothing about it. And his car. We actually had pet insurance because Sam, my wife, wanted to get it. And so we actually did have pet insurance. So luckily... 80% 80% of that's going to be covered. So I would genuinely recommend getting pet insurance right, if you've got a dog, okay. especially because he's a big breed. That's a known problem to have. So luckily we had pet insurance. Yeah, my God. I thought you were going to say it was one of your cats, though. I was really worried. Well, you cared more about the cats than the dog? <laughs> yeah. Jeez, <laughs> Belle. Now, I don't give two hoots about sport. You guys know that. But I do know who Tom Brady is. Brady rifles to the corner. Touchdown. Incredible. 
the goat. Well, I mean, of that particular sport, yeah. Well, I've I've now got extra interest in him after he posted on Instagram um, a little carousel. It was photos of him and his son by the swimming pool. And it's gotten people talking because he's very, very affectionate with his son. Let's just say that. There's a photo of them. His son is about, like, 15 and... He's sitting on his lap. They've got their legs intertwined. There's a photo, the next one, you know, there's a photo of Tom kissing the back of his son's neck. And <laughs> it's nice. It's I don't know what's the big bit, deal. The kid's not three, you know? The kid's yeah, I know, almost about still, to drive. It's still his son, you know? Like it's, so, Liam, you don't think it's weird. I'm just looking at the photos now. You don't think it's weird that Tom Brady's legs are intertwined with his son's legs? I mean, he's, he's just, sitting on his I lap. Mean, he's being affectionate. I don't. I don't think it's creepy. It's his. You know, it's his son. He loves him. Well, it's like just like you know, he's kissing his son on the back of the neck. I suppose you, you kiss your dog. I wouldn't kiss someone else's dog, but I'd kiss my own dog. Hang on, his son's not his dog. No, but I'm saying like you just. Do you know what I mean? He's just showing some affection. And then something to, take he a, loves. to take a selfie of you kissing your, the back of your son's neck and then posting it as well. That seems strange. This is well. This is the discussion. So, is it? We, is it only weird because we're making it weird? Is that just what their relationship is? Or is this kid just like, is it like, you know, would it, when you would have. Would it be weird if it was his daughter? <laughs> Still a little bit yeah, weird, it's I think. Yeah, a little bit weird. You know, I, 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 don't know. I think as well, and people say, like, oh, it's not weird in their family, but that poor kid, in, the way society works is that poor kid now is going to go to school and get bullied because of what his dad posted. Well, by the looks of it, he's going to go to uni. Um, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. To be fair, the kid does have an Adam's apple. Like, he's, he's pretty old, but... <laughs> But his dad is clearly just a good dad. I mean, would we would we prefer it if, you know, Tom Brady is this big, you know, superstar and he never mm. sees his kids? And, you know, at least he's like a clearly like seems like an affectionate dad who True. loves his they've kids, just even through... though he's a, you know, he's a big deal. Yeah, they've had the divorce and everything as well. So they're probably, you know, it's tough times in that family. But it then leads to the question, because people are also commenting going, you know, what else are they doing at home that's a little bit too close? Like, are they having showers? Like, well, no. Get, you know, like... <laughs> I mean, that's... <laughs> But I mean, like, who, is I mean, the that's, kid sleeping in that's the bed pretty with wild. Them? Like, yeah, no, of course not. Are they a yes. doors open family? Like, <laughs> Guys, what's the go? Where is where are people pulling that from? There's a big difference between your dad giving you a kiss and bloody jumping in the shower with him. You know what I mean? Like, that's a the close family. mate. Weird. Okay. They can be too close. I don't know. I don't know. My, my I don't family. Know. Well, look, what do you, do you think it's weird? Thirteen, twenty, four, ten. You may not have seen the photo, but just say, let's say this kid is. He's 15. So he's 15. Yeah, he's 15. I'm... He's sitting on a pool chair in between his dad's legs. His dad's giving him a bit of a hug and he's giving him a bit of a kiss on, on the back of the neck. It's the, the neck, neck kiss. Yeah, it's I'm the... I'm team weird with Belle. Yeah. Liam, I'm, your team I'm not weird. Team, he's just a nice dad. Would you do that with your dad? <laughs> well, probably not. <laughs> Probably not, but let's do a snap poll this morning, Melbourne. 13, 24, 10. Give us a buzz. We'd love to know. Tom Brady, the photos with his son. Is it weird in your opinion? Uh, well, we are talking a little, bit, a little bit about Tom Brady this morning, the NFL superstar. Brady rifles to the corner. Touchdown. Incredible. So he posted this um, post on Instagram and it's him and his 15-year-old son by the pool. But it's gotten people talking because they're very affectionate. And Mm. there's one photo where you can see they've got their legs intertwined on the chair. He's obviously sitting on his dad's lap. And the other one is um, is the kid and then Tom kissing the back of his neck. Bill, you're making it weird, Ben. (laughs) You're also making it weird. I'm saying it's just a dad being a little affectionate to his son. He's just obviously a nice man who loves his kids. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't think, Liam, that we're making it weird. I think it is just a bit weird. Well, Caller joins us now in Endeavour Hills. Have you, have you seen the photo? or do you, Just from our explanation, what do you think? Do you think it's weird? No, it's not weird at all. I've got a 15-year-old son and I will hold on to him and kiss him. And I can barely reach his neck, so that's where a lot of my kisses land. So no, it's not weird at all. I can see, I can see that. But what about if you were sitting on the couch? Would he come and sit on your lap? Um, he wouldn't, but I might drag him down to get a hug while he's walking past, <laughs> okay, and he might yeah. land awkwardly on my lap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Would you take a selfie with your son kissing the back of his neck and then post it onto socials? 
Oh, he wouldn't let me do that. That's yeah, sure see, that. I think that's why I'm like, I think it is a bit weird. I think there is a line cross. All right, well, Florence in Roeville, what do you think? Is it weird or not weird? Oh, well, I think it's a bit weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it because of the yeah. age? Uh, do you have kids yourself? Probably it's because of the age, yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't have a son. I have a daughter, um, and she's six years old, and I'll, I'll have her kids and everything else. But um, a 15 year old, uh, maybe not. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so yeah, okay. yeah it's inter- isn't it interesting as well because it's like well, where then the question becomes like at what age do you stop kissing the back of their neck? Uh, I would say once they start getting a little bit, a bit of the mo on the upper. Yeah, lip, when you get probably. the bum fluff on the chin, maybe <laughs> is, the, is the warning sign. Yvette from Ferntree Gully, what do you good think? Good morning. I mean, Tom Brady. Good morning to you. I mean, NFL superstar. He's just giving his son a little cuddle, a bit of a kiss in the back of the neck. The internet. I think it's enjoying beautiful. It. You think it's beautiful? I, I, I think. You know, really honestly, mm-hmm. this is the thing. You have to remember, this is a fifteen-year-old boy. Mm. You know, Know, and 15-year-old boys, if they are so comfortable with their father that mm. they're sitting in their lap and embracing, if that was me and my daughter, no one's going to say anything. Exactly. Yeah. So you've got a man who has got a 15-year-old. It's a child. Like, mm. I know 15-year-old boys can be six foot four. I get it. Mm. But he's also a child who's allowing, because of trust, his dad to embrace him in that way and post it. So... That's not a problem to them. It shouldn't be a problem to us. I agree. Yeah, Good point. I like that, Vet. No, look, I think you've even swung the uh, the other two people in the room here. I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to finish work today. I'm going to go home and get a big ne- kiss on the neck from Dad. You nestle into that, lad. <laughs> <laughs> you let him get up in that neck. <laughs> No, it's just a little. It's a little peck, but I I agree. This this big <laughs> no, this big you know it's, icon of a man. He's yeah. a sporting superstar, and if he can show other dads that that's okay to show a bit of affection to your kids, and that's a good thing. Yvette, thank you very much for your call this morning. Thank you. Back after the Christmas break, and look, Christmas, uh, you always get some good gifts, and you get some gifts that you're not very happy with, and that's why as a radio show, we've decided to take care of that problem. One man's trash is another man's treasure, as Macklemore once famously said. <laughs> um, so, yeah, get in touch if you've got a present that you'd like to swap this morning, 13, 24, 10. And maybe it might be something that is someone else's treasure. Yeah. They can then call up and claim it, swap you for something that you might need. Yep, so we are going to be speaking to somebody this morning. They're going to tell us what they got for Christmas. They don't want it. So if you want it, you call up, but you have to swap what you got for Christmas to get the present. Did you guys get anything crappy this year? Mine were all pretty good. I got oh, a really. Oh yeah, I got. I lucked out. I got a pair, pair of the old RMs. My first pair. Really? Did yep. you? RMs are tough because for the first few weeks it's torture. Yeah. It's really hard to break them in, like a Birkenstock. Yep. Like docks. Yeah, all yeah they're all, these are they're all shoes, guys. We're all saying shoes. <laughs> we're all doing a good job here. What about you, Ben? What did you get? Uh, I didn't get anything for Christmas. That's a bit sad. Uh, Belle, yourself? Well, I got I got a, a, a bar of soap from my mum and deodorant. And I think she's sending me a message. Well, but... I will not be swapping <laughs> my boots with your soap. Well, let's find out what Simone got. Good morning, Simone. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Uh, my so... in Laws are out from the UK, yep. and they said Christmas seems to be bigger and better this year than any before. So a couple of weeks beforehand, we're frantically decluttering the house and making it perfect, and my mother-in-law come along and took all my old clothes and serving plates and platters, um, and she decided that everyone would get, you know, nice jerseys, footy jerseys, and expensive vouchers, um, but I unwrapped my present. I got a nice gift tray. Ice cube tray. As in your own one re-gifted to you? Or just an ice cube tray? No, an ice cube tray. Is it one of those rubber ones? It's easier to pop the ice cubes out. It's a a plastic one that you got when you get a new fridge. Oh, it's the ones that come with the fridge. Yeah, they're not not as good. That's the Christmas present that's up for grabs this morning. Simone wants to swap her ice cube tray. If you're in the market for one and you think, actually, that sounds pretty good. And I don't want this iPhone that I got given. Uh, we are looking for people who are willing to swap their Christmas presents. Swap gifts, swap gifts. Only if you want. Simone, uh, good morning. You were given an ice tray by your mother-in-law. Does she not like you? Well, I don't know. It's, 
I've got no idea, really. Now, Simone, just confirming, um, because Liam asked this question and I, and I got excited when he asked it because I like the idea of the silicon ice trays. They seem appealing. But this is just a regular plastic one, yeah? This is just a regular plastic one with a small, little, tiny little square. You couldn't even use it for cocktails. Mm. And you've said it might be, it's like the ones that you get when you buy a fridge, a new fridge, and it comes in the freezer, which someone may have snapped theirs. They might Mm -hmm. be looking for a brand new one. Well, that's the way this is going to work. So you call up 132410 with a present that you got for Christmas, and if you want to swap it for that ice tray, you have to get picked by Simone. First up, we got Justine. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, What did you get for Christmas that you want to swap for the ice tray? I got a Guzmani Gomez takeaway card. Um, it was fifty dollars, but when I went to use it, it had no money on it. <laughs> oh damn! They'd already used up the Guzmani on it. From? <laughs> yeah. Wow! And it was from my boyfriend as well. Oh yeah, <laughs> awesome. Well, I mean, I I would say that to be honest, the ice tray is probably more useful than the card with yep. no money on it. But I suppose you could use that card for other things. Simone, um, do do you want I the Guzmani Gomez voucher, or what do you what are you thinking? Would you like to hear the other options? Yeah, let's hear another option. Okay, yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. You could write a letter and say, hey, it, it didn't come right that, that, the voucher, and you could probably get that money back on. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Or you could just re-gift it to someone else you don't like. <laughs> yeah, that's card. Yeah, uh, Phil, uh, what would you like to trade for the ice tray? Yeah, good morning. I think it compliments Simone's offer. I've actually got a six-pack of uh, little whiskey goblet glasses that I got given. So A six-pack of little uh, whiskey goblet Goblet glasses. Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> Don't fully understand what that is. No, it's just a little, like a little goblet, like a little. You know, you could have it in. You know, like a wizard would have. You know, no, a strong. What do you a, do with no. goblins and wizards? No, 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 like, like a, a goblet. goblet. A goblet. Yeah. Like no. something, do you, it sort of. It would sit in between your hand quite nicely, I'd imagine, Phil. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yes. I might right. need the uh, ice tray box as well. Well, of course. Yeah. Well, maybe you could go half half. Simone, do you like the idea of the little oh. goblets? No, but I feel like my trays would go well with his present, so he could have the tray. Okay, well, look, we do have one more caller if you want to hear somebody else out, Simone, or do you want to make your decision now? Uh, let's hear one out. Okay. 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 Nikki, uh, what did you get for Christmas that you'd like to trade this morning? Pardon me? Uh, so sorry, it's just <laughs> the thing you called up for. What, what would you like to trade for uh, the um, ice tray? Um, a Monopoly box. A Monopoly box? Socks, yeah. Oh, Monopoly socks. Oh, right. Oh, that, that's kind of lame. <laughs> who, who, who gave you that? Hey, all these presents are lame. I'm my friend. Your friend. Uh, yeah. What do you think, Simone? Would you, you into those Monopoly I socks? I just hold on to my tray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you gonna gonna I'd rather give them to the poor guy that got the goblet. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, hey, hey, Phil, uh, what do you reckon? Could you spare one goblet for a uh, ice tray? Oh, look, I can even spare two, I reckon. Oh, okay, yeah, I mean, yeah. No, no, I don't want the goblet. You don't want the goblet, though. (laughs) This is a weird, weird segment. Okay, well, uh, Phil, you will get an ice tray and keep your goblet. um, Got little goblets. Uh, Simone, you get nothing. Uh, Nikki keeps her Monopoly socks. And, uh, yeah, I forgot what Justine had. Swap gifts, swap gifts. Only if you want... And I, for one, am very happy that the boss is still on Christmas break. Yes, because uh, always good to do your best segment at 20 past eight in the morning, I find. <laughs> very good. Ben, myself and Belle have obviously recently moved to Melbourne. When you move, obviously you, your whole life gets uprooted. We're living in Adelaide for the last few years, Sydney before that. And uh, whenever when you, you move, sometimes you, you know your partner has to move their entire life as well and their, their job. And it's, you know, so we really love them and appreciate them for, for doing that sort of stuff. And um, it's obviously hard when you're in a new town to, to make new friends. And uh, so that's something that my fiance has been sort of dealing with at the moment. She's like, oh, well, my, my whole friendship circle in a different state so I've got to make some new buds which is fair and um, she's she's recently um, jumped on Bumble <gasps> no has she done the friend the friend matching on Bumble the dating app to find friends though yeah 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 there's yeah, like yeah. a you setting can... where you can just find friends yes, on it I yes. find that crazy well she apparently she went she got her um, like eyelashes done and, the, and she was saying oh yeah like don't have any friends here new here and the lady was like babe Jump on Bumble. That's how I met like all my best friends, yeah. and apparently it's like not weird. No, it's not. It's uh, she said it's only weird if other people from Melbourne are finding people from Melbourne. 
Well, as in they haven't like, just moved here. Yeah, it's like, well, you've lived here your whole life, so you should probably have some friends. So with Bumble, I thought that was just for dating. So is there a friendship button? Yep. So, th- well, it's like a section. So there's a whole right. friendship s- section. Unless I'm really having there. a wall pulled over my eyes here. Oh, was that Bumble, is it? Yeah, just using it to find friends. <laughs> okay, well, have fun with that. No, when I moved from I'm Melbourne. I'm using Grindr to find some mates. <laughs> when I moved from Melbourne to Sydney to work with you yes. guys. Did you do the I, same thing? No, I contemplated it because it was just when they started doing it. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I don't want to be one of the first people to use that feature. And then I was going to do it when we moved uh, again it's... to Adelaide. And I thought, I'll do it. And then I just I just never did. Well, Because it's, it's the same sort of concept, I suppose, if you're looking to, you know, if you're starting an actual relationship, people, you know, people are married now have used dating apps to find each other. But it's just like if you're in a situation where you're new in town, you know, it's obviously Melbourne's a bit of a transient place as well. People are coming in and out for work. Why are people so desperate for friends? You know what I mean? Like you don't, you, don't need, you don't need friends ben, in your life. Then you don't need friends. It's overrated. It's just somebody you have to text every now and then. You know what I mean? You have to tell them what you're up to. Overrated. You don't I, need, I need friends. friends. I got some powers here. I'm still You've thinking got... about ch- trying this bubble thing out. <laughs> too many, Lee. Ah, you can always have more friends. That's what I say. Um, are you listening to this this morning? Going, yeah, that's how I met my mate. Have you have you made friends off a dating app? 13, 20, 14 is the number. There's also, like, you can join those Facebook groups as well. You know, you can you, there's, like, Find Friends Melbourne and you, no, like, make meetups. I'm and, sorry. Because I'm also, like, you're, meet No, you're only going to find weirdos. I don't think so. You're only going to find weird people on Facebook groups who are looking for friends. I don't know. I think, I think these days, like, you know, the online world is a lot different to what it was. I think 10, it's weirder 10, than ever. 10, 15 think, years ago. <laughs> happy for you to prove me wrong if you've made friends on a Facebook group on Bumble, but I think you're going to be meeting complete weirdos. Oh. Hey, we've recently moved to town, and uh, because of that, you know, new social circles and whatnot, and I was just telling uh, the guys how my fiance Sarah's just recently opened up a Bumble account, which is normally for dating, but there is like a friends mode on it where you can find new pals. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, no, I, just, I helped her with the profile, so it's definitely she's like looking for friends, which I think, you know, it's cute, it's nice, but um, and I, I don't think it's, like for some people, I don't think it's actually like a weird thing. I, I'd never really heard of it. But apparently, a lot of people are making friends this way. It definitely is. It's. It's. I think it was a few years ago. I think it came out, but it definitely around the time that I left Melbourne to move to Sydney and then again yeah. to Adelaide, I was contemplating doing it. And I think people have met some good friends. Nikki in Pasco Vale, did you find a friend using a dating app? Yeah, I found a friend on Facebook. Oh right. So is this one of those Facebook like find friends groups? It was like a community page. Okay. Like you could go meet for coffee and just pretty much do the down low on what's going on with your life. I so, do, I've and seen I these. went along and I met this wonderful woman called Philippa. Yeah, right. And so you're still friends to this day? We've been friends for about three years now. So, Nikki, did you just drop a comment on that chat and then Philippa was like, yeah, let's hang out? And then you just caught up for a coffee and then you just hung out? Yeah, we just went, we met up for a coffee and she had a greyhound dog. Yeah. And I just love dogs and then I ended up buying myself a mini dash hound yeah. and now that dogs are best friends and we just wander around the neighbourhood talking to absolutely everybody and making them smile without, with our idiot dogs. Oh, that sounds nice, Nikki. It feels like you bought the dog to, like, you know, further the friendship. Like, oh, geez, my my dog needs to hang out this week, you know what I mean? But, like, yeah. oh, that's not, like, it's nice that people can connect that way. That's Obviously, sweet. you're both looking for a little something, something. Uh, Joel in Essendon, uh, mate, you, you found a friend on an app. Yeah, hi, guys. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me. Um, so, um, different app, uh, Grinder. It was Grinder. Um, Grinder, yeah. So, so Grinder's um that app for those in the LGBTIQ plus community. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the one that makes it sound like Boop. you 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 hear it. So sometimes you hear a like a, a grinder ding, and you're like, oh, hello, uh, that just went off in their pocket. <laughs> you do. You yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. One of my mates had the app on, and you'd always you'd always hear it at work. You know, you'd be like, oh, Mark, I know what you're up to. Today. <laughs> uh, anyway, look. Grinder, grinders, um, grinders probably you know for those looking for something a little bit more in- intimate, probably mm. the, the more professional way to say it. But mm. um, uh, you know, I, I moved for interstate six years ago, and um, you know, it, it, it's uh, it's definitely something where you know you, you get along, you get chance to people, and yeah, I've, I've made some really good friends that I'm still friends like with today, and I've met their friends through 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 an so, app. Um, Joel, are you then upfront when you match with someone and you say, "Hey, I'm just looking for friendship"? Are you upfront about that? Is that how it works? Um, well, I don't 
thing I necessarily was, you know, was, was sort of going, oh, yes, I'm going to go on there and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make some friends. You know, it's just more to, I don't really know, it was more to maybe communicate with people and yeah, just, just get mingling more so. Um, you know, I think gone are the days where, you know, ev- everyone is settling down in their, you know, their early 20s or their late teens and getting married and having kids and people are wanting more variety and something a little bit different. So, you know, they're getting on the apps and going, OK, I want to meet some, someone to have some fun with. I want to meet someone to, to have a relationship with. I just want to go out and have a drink with someone. So um, I think there's a lot more variety yeah, with what people are looking for nowadays than what they were, you mm. know, maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, well, good on you, Joel. I'm glad you, you made some mates that way. It's it's a weird thing. Like, the, the only thing that I feel is strange about the whole process is if you had to break up with the friend. Like, mm. if you if the date wasn't going well and then, like... You know, it's not it's not you, it's me, kind of in a friend way. <laughs> like, a, yeah, that, that's where it might get tricky. I've, I think. I've kind of done that when I was interstate. I had a coffee date with somebody, and we didn't really get along as well as we thought we would. Mm. We'd only met at the gym a few times, and yeah. so we just kind of stopped messaging just, each other and just well, kind of like you each stopped each messaging other. each other. Yeah, it's not like you like put you know bought a dog or something. And I'm like, hey, I got a, I got a dog now. <laughs> For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.